What's up everyone and welcome to this video. I'm back with a Python project and this one is going to be awesome. I'm going to show you how you can build a Python application that searches for songs on the Spotify API. But we're going to take it a step further and take that song data and store it in a local database. If you've watched my other videos, you know that I love building projects with the Spotify API. This video takes it up a notch and you're going to be working with some very popular and awesome Python libraries. Before we begin, please do give this video a like and if you don't enjoy it, you can of course unlike it at the end. All right, buckle up your seatbelts and let's get started. Right, so for this project, I just want to let you know that we are going to be writing a lot of code. And uh, for that reason, what we're not going to do is have one long Python file. I think this is a good opportunity for me to kind of show you or give you an overview of good software engineering practices for being able to organize, structure or modularize your code in a good way. And I think more importantly, if you want to then take this application, maybe you want to store more than just songs down the line. Maybe you want to start storing albums or other things. This serves as a really good base for you to be able to do that. And you'll be able to see the benefits of us doing the hardware work now of structure and organizing it uh, later on when it comes to working with that uh, so yeah um, let's get started right so I've created my project directory I've called it save Spotify song data and I'm going to create two more files within this the first one is the requirements.txt file the second one is the main.py file and uh, we're going to create a few more later on but these two will suffice for now and then I'm going to open up uh, this in my favorite code editor these days which is NeoVim and I'll open up the requirements.txt file. You can, of course, use VS Code, um, whatever you prefer. And uh, let's define the dependencies that we're going to need for this project. So the first dependency that we're going to need is the SQL model dependency. And the version for that is 0.0.16. There might be more up-to-date uh, versions. So you want to check PyPy to see. At this moment in time, this is the most up-to-date version. And uh, the SQL model library is going to allow us to represent our database table, which is going to be a song. We're going to be able to represent that as a Python model object or SQL model object. And that's going to make it a bit easier for us to be able to work with that in our application. If none of that makes sense to you, don't worry. We're going to explain it as I write the code using that library. So don't worry about that for now. And then the second one is the Spotify library. The Spotify library is a really good library for being able to work with the Spotify API. And I've made a few videos about this, which I'll link to in the description below, showing you how to work with this library and how to work with the Spotify API. So if you're curious and of course you want to build more projects around using the Spotify API, then I will link to those. So these are the only two dependencies that we're going to need. So once those are defined, I'm going to save that. And then what I'll do is open up my main.py file. Right, so I'm in my main.py file. And what we want to do when we run this file, this is our main application. We want to be asked, what do you want to search for, right? So, you know, the same way you use Spotify and you search for songs, we want to be asked for the same search query and then when we enter maybe you know drake for example we want to be given back those results and then we want to be given the option to save all of those songs and the data for those songs in a database right so that's kind of what we want from this application so with that in mind um, i'll start off by importing some libraries we're going to need so the first one is going to be the spotify library then the next one is Spotify import the Spotify client credentials. That is going to be the way we're going to authenticate with the Spotify API. I'll talk more about that later on. And then we're going to import some types just uh, because we'll use these. And I think that is it for now. Let's start writing the method that's going to allow us to search for songs with the Spotify library. Right, so I've moved myself out of the way. So to start searching for songs on Spotify using the Spotify library, we need to set up the authentication. And so we're going to have two variables, client ID and the client secret. We'll leave these empty for now because I'm going to show you how we can get these details from the Spotify dashboard. And then once we've got those, we need to create, uh, create the client credentials manager. That's what I'm going to call it. That is going to use the Spotify client credentials that we imported early on. And we need to pass in two things. The first is the client ID. Um, ID equals client ID. And the next one is client secret. Uh, client secret, um, yeah. Cool. All right, so that's installed. And then the last thing that we want to do is create or uh, initialize the client with those credentials. So we'll do Spotify dot Spotify. And then this one, you need to pass in the client credentials manager. And that, of course, is going to be equal to the client credentials manager that we just defined. 
And just to remind you, the client credentials is one of the authentication methods that you can use to authenticate with the Spotify API. There's other authentication methods, so it largely depends on what application that you want to build. In this case, Spotify client credentials uh, is more than fine for us for this application. I have covered the other methods in another video, which I will link to. So if you want to build a more complex application or you need a different kind of authentication, which refreshes, definitely do check out that video afterwards. So now that we've got this in place, the next thing I want to do is write a method that searches for songs. That's going to take a query, uh, which is going to be a string. And we know, or what we want this method to return is a list of songs. We haven't defined this song object yet, but that's fine. But yeah, uh, this method is going to take in a search query and then return a list of songs. Right, so let's write the code that's actually going to search for songs. So to do that, I'll create a results variable and I'll set that equal to sp.search. And uh, just before we write the code for the search, I want to go into this method and I just want to show you the API. So the way the search method works on the Spotify library is you pass in the query. So the search query, what you're searching for, and then you need to pass in the limit, uh, which is the number of songs that are going to be returned. Now here it's default uh, to 10. Um, you can pass up to 50, that's the maximum. So for now, we only want 10. If you want more than that, then you can implement pagination, but we won't be going over that in this video. And then the last thing is we just need to specify the type of search that we're doing. By default it is track, but you can also search for hours albums and playlists. So I think the only thing that we need to define here, we just need to pass in the query and then the limit, we'll just set it equal to 10 and that will return uh, 10 songs back to us. So the results variable now contains a list of tracks. Of course, it refers to songs in Spotify's API terminology. And uh, what we want to do is iterate through each one of these tracks, extract out the data and store it in our song object. Uh, we don't want all the data for a track, right? We only want certain pieces of information. So we want to kind of uh, extract that data out, build up this list of songs and then return it back from this method as a list. So to do that, I need to iterate through each a track that came back in the result. So I will type for track in results. Tracks. This new keyboard is not easy for me. All right. And then what we'll do is we'll create a song and then it's going to be an instance of the song model, which we haven't yet created, but that's fine. We'll set the title equal to the track. And then the title of the song can be found in the track uh, in the name key. The next thing we want to do is uh, set an artist for this song. The artist, given that a song can have multiple artists, what we'll do is we'll just get the uh, first artist. So we can do that by typing or indexing it um, in the first element and then album equal to the name of the album. And then what I'll do to get that is album and then name. And then the last thing that we want is the Spotify ID. So Spotify give a unique identifier to each track. And the reason why we want this is going to become very important later on. But ultimately, we don't want to store the same song again and again in the database, right? We want to remove any duplicates. And so a good strategy for doing this is when you insert a song beforehand, what you do is just check if the song already exists. And if it already exists, you don't need to store it, right? And this Spotify ID is going to help us do that. So to extract out the ID, that's Spotify give for a song, you can find it in track ID. And then what we'll do is we'll just append this song that we've just created to this array. And then what I'll do down here is return songs. And of course, just before I do that, I need to create an array here, uh, an empty array, right? So we iterate through each track in the results that come back. We're going to create a song model uh, for each track. Um, extracting out only the data that we care about. We haven't yet created the song model. I'll show you how to do that in a second. Then we append that song to this songs array and then we return back the list of songs. So we know that this uh, method, when it returns back a list of songs, we'll be able to access uh, these pieces of information, title, artist, album, and Spotify ID. Right, so before we continue, I want to show you how to now create the database. We're going to create a SQLite database, which is essentially just going to be a file that we're going to store in the current directory. We'll call it songs.db. And then that is the database that's going to store all of our songs. Um, so I'll show you how to create the database and I'll show you how to create this model here called song, which as you can see, I'm getting an error because it's saying not defined. I'll show you how to create those two things. And then what we'll do is we'll put it all together. So the first thing that I want to do is um, we want to create a new file and the file that we want to create is uh, db.py. So this is basically going to be the file 
that handles the setup of the database and uh, the creation of it. Okay, so now what I want to do is show you how you can create this song model and uh, how we're going to create the database that's going to store all of our songs. So to do that, we want to create a new file. Uh, we're going to call this file song underscore model dot py. Um, this is going to store our song model code. And uh, the reason why we're doing this is just to be a bit more structured and organized. So if I go into this song model here, the first thing that we want to do is uh, import a few things. Okay, so the first thing that we want to do is import from SQL model the field, and then we want to import SQL model itself. And the way this works is we're going to create our song uh, model, and uh, we do that by typing in class song. But the most important thing is it needs to inherit from the SQL model. And uh, this essentially gives us all the functionality. And what this is going to do is create the model in our database. So SQL model, and then we'll set table equal to true, which is just basically going to say that this class should be treated as a representation of a database table. So the next thing that we need to do is define the fields that we want in this model. And uh, if you remember in our main.py file here, uh, there's a few fields that we decided that we're going to populate, which is the title, the artist, the album, the Spotify ID. So what we need to do is in here, add those, right? So the first field that we're going to create is the ID field. Um, and that's going to uh, be an integer. The default for that is going to be none. And then primary key is going to be equal to true. And uh, if you're not familiar with database terminology, what this basically means is that anytime you add a song to the database, the ID is going to be an integer and it's going to be auto incremented. So the first song that you add to the database is going to have an ID of one. The next song you add will have an ID of two. The next song after that, an ID of three. And you know, that just keeps auto incrementing. And the primary key basically means that every song in the database will have a unique ID. So you can never have two songs with the same ID. And so all of that is taken care of for you. So you don't need to worry about inserting any of that for yourself. All you need to do is to find uh, this line here and then now what we want to do is add the fields uh, that we want to store for the song so from earlier on we had title and what i'll do is to make life easier i'll paste these we had album um, we had artist and we had spotify id and as i mentioned earlier the reason why we're storing the spotify id is that when we insert a new song what we want to do is check if that song already exists and the spotify id is a useful identifier that will allow us to do that check okay so now that we've created the song model it's now time to create our database and to do that we're going to have another file again this is all in the name of being structured and organized and this file is going to be called db.py. And in here, what we'll do is we'll define the code or write the code that's going to uh, create our database for us. So we do need to import a few things. The first one is, uh, is going to come from SQL model, create engine. And the second one is SQL model. And then what we'll do is we'll have a name for our database. Um, I'll call this songs.db. Um, and by the way, the database that we're creating is a SQLite database. And so it will be a file that is stored locally. Um, I'm defining uh, the name for the database, but this uh, database is going to be stored in the local directory in our project directory. So uh, that's the name of the database. And to actually create it, we'll type in engine, create engine, which we imported above. And then what we'll do is uh, we're going to need to define that this is a SQLite database. So we need to give it a SQLite string. And then what we'll do is we'll pass in the database name. Okay. And I'll just close that out here. And then the last thing that we want to do is create a method that's going to create all of the tables in this database. So we'll have create tables. And then this one is going to call SQL model dot metadata dot create all and pass in the engine. Now, what this is essentially doing is uh, it's creating the engine, which is essentially the database. And then this method is going to create all the tables within that database. And you're probably wondering, well, why is it that we're not passing in the song model here? How does it know that it needs to create the song model uh, table in the database? Well, this is where kind of SQL model takes care of it for you. That's the magic that we had where uh, the song model inherits from this SQL model class, as you can see. And because it inherits from that, the moment we call this SQL model dot metadata dot create all, it knows that uh, there is a song model that needs to be created in the database so it's doing all of this behind the scenes for you and so that's quite convenient so this is all we need to do to create the uh, sqlite database now let's go back to our main code where we can start to put all of this together okay so let's start off with our imports while i'm here actually let me fix this import it was meant to be spotify auth 2 um, so now what we want to do is import the song model so we can do that by typing in from song model import song and then we also want to import uh, from db, import, create tables. 
And then what we'll do is um, down below in our main method. So I'm going to do if name, go to name. And then what we'll do is this is where we're going to create the tables. That's the first thing we're going to do. So this will create our database and then we'll set up a few options. So when we run this program, we're going to say or, or tell the user, do you want to search for songs? Do you want to get all the songs from the database or do you want to quit? Right. So we want to give them each one of these options and for each one of those, uh, write the code for that. So the way we're going to do this is set up a while true loop and we're going to have a selection variable that's going to store the user selection. And in here, it's going to be enter. And then here we're going to say, if you want to search type S um, to search, we'll have G to print all songs in the DB and Q to quit, right? So, you know, this is just going to allow us to get uh, the user to tell us exactly what they want to do before we proceed. So now it's time to check for what the user selected. So the first thing we'll do is we'll just set it to a lowercase. Actually, I'll move this up and then we'll say if selection equal equal to Q, that's the easiest uh, condition to deal with. We'll just break. We'll just quit out of the program. If the otherwise elif selection equal to G, that means we want to get all of the songs. And to do that, uh, we'll start. Uh, we'll first start off by saying uh, all songs in the database. Um, and then what we'll do is we'll have a variable called all songs and that's going to be equal to DAO get all songs. We haven't defined this method yet, but that's fine. Then the next thing we want to do is iterate through each one of these songs. We want to print out uh, the title of the song. We want to print out the artist. And then we also want to print out the album if the song is part of the album. And uh, that's all we want to do, really. So that is going to handle the case where the user wants us to give back all of the songs that are currently in the database. Right. So now that we've handled the case where the user wants to see all the songs in the database, we'll just quit. Let's handle the main case, which is searching for songs. So uh, bear with me. There's going to be quite a bit of code here, but of course, I'll explain all of it. So what we'll do is we'll check if the selection is uh, equal to s that was the one that we offered um if they want to search for songs then what we'll do is we'll create a variable called search query and this is going to be or we'll ask them to enter their search and then we defined a method above um, if you remember early on what i'll do is i'll just go search songs so this is the method that we defined above um, where we pass in a query and we expect to get back a list of songs. So let's call that method now. Um, so if I come back here and then what we'll do is we'll call this method search underscore songs and then we pass in the query, right? So after this method is executed, we expect that songs will now contain an array of songs and an array of song uh, model objects, right? So that will give us access to you know, the title, the album, the artist, right? So the first thing that we want to do is check that we actually got some songs back. And if we got some songs, uh, songs back, let's just show them to the user. Um, so we'll say search, uh, Mm, let's say uh, songs returned um, and let's just put the length of songs, right? So that tells them uh, how many songs were actually returned. And then what we'll do is we'll iterate through each song. Um, so I will set up um, enumerate and we'll start it from I and uh, start from one, sorry. This is just some uh, a Python for loop that's going to allow us to print out. I want each song to be printed out on a line and I want it to say song one, song two, song three uh, and the details of that song. So they'll know how many songs were returned and they'll also be able to see each detail for each uh, song that was returned. So we'll have an F string here and it will be uh, I. And then we'll put here the title of the song. Song dot title. And then we'll return the uh, artist. I think I think that should be enough. Um, so song dot artist. 
Okay, so now we've now printed out all the songs that were returned. The next thing that we want to do now is ask the user if they want to save that song in the database. So to do that, we'll have another input, which is input. Do you want to save the these songs, right? So for all the songs that were returned, do you want to save them, right? And we'll do a simple yes, no. Now, if they enter yes, uh, if save choice is equal to yes, we now want to save all of these songs to the database, right? So the way we'll do that is we'll create a method called save songs. This is the one that's actually going to save all of the songs in this list in the database. So we're going to create that later. And if not, then what we'll do is we'll just say songs not saved, right? Um, and then the last thing that we want to print out is if no songs were returned from the search, let's just tell the user that, yeah, no songs were found. No songs were found for your search, right? So there's quite a bit of code here, but in essence, what we're doing here, uh, let me just correct that. In essence, what we're doing here is uh, if the user selected S, which is they want to search for songs, we will ask them for their search and then we'll run the search and then we'll go through each song. Uh, so in the case that, you know, more than uh, we got at least one song or more back, we'll then iterate through each one and we'll just print it out to the user so they know uh, details about what songs were returned. And then we'll ask them if they want to save those songs. And if they do, we'll save it to the database. Again, this method along with save songs, along with this method here, I get all songs. I should probably keep this consistent. Let's call this DAO save songs. Um, so we'll save all the songs. And if they selected anything other than Y, uh, then we won't save those songs to the database. And the last else condition is if uh, no songs were found, then we'll just uh, say no songs were found for your search. So yeah, there's quite a bit of code here, um, but I think this is pretty good and it covers the edge cases too. Right, and the last thing that we need to do before we can give this run is just create the two methods, one that's going to get all of the songs from the database and the other one that's going to save the songs for, uh, to the database. And for that, we're going to create a new file. So I will do that by time being, and we'll call this file song uh, Um By the way, um, if you're not familiar, song or DAO stands for data access object and it is a design pattern in software engineering where you have a dedicated layer that is going to interact directly with tables in your database, right? And it's nice to keep all of this interaction in one place, right? So any interaction with uh, the database or maybe in this case, we're going to be getting all the songs. Uh, you can have a method that searches the song by title, searches the song by artist, anything that's related to searching directly or interacting with tables directly in the database should be in the style layer. And again, it's that whole pattern of keeping things well structured and organized and uh, segmented and DAO is a nice way of doing that. So the first method or the first thing that we need to do is we need to import a few things. So let's start off by importing, uh, typing import list, then from SQL model, import the session and select. That's going to be used when we want to retrieve all of the songs. Then we'll import song from song model import the song and then from db import the engine because we're going to need the database to actually run these queries so the first query that i want to uh, create is the get all songs query so to do that we'll have the method dao get all songs now this method is going to return back a list of songs that's the reason why we imported list above and to run the query that's going to get back all the songs uh, from the database we use this context manager with session and we pass in the engine a session um, and the idea is but uh, what we're doing is we're opening up a database session and then in which we can run queries that's going to interact or get data or manipulate data in the database so the statement that we want to run is going to be select song and then what this is going to do is execute that statement right um, and then return the songs. So it's quite straightforward. Um, what this is essentially doing is 
we want to run a statement for this table which is song and that statement that we want to run is uh, all which is going to return all the songs in that table and then we're just returning it back so it is quite simple you can probably shorten this code to be one line but i i did it like this just to give you an idea of exactly what's going on so breaking it down by selecting this specific table and running the all method to return all of the songs right so the last method that we want to write is the one that's going to save songs to the database and if we go back to the main.py file i'll just go back to the bottom here we said that we'd call it dao save songs so we would do that def dao save songs this is going to take in a list of songs and then what we'll do is we'll open up a session with the engine uh, so, you know, as you're building out your application, maybe you're going to end up adding more methods. Whenever you're working with the database, you just need to open up a session for that database with this context manager. So, yeah, just follow this pattern and you'll be good. Um, so with a session engine as session, uh, we'll iterate through each song. So for song in songs. And then what we want to do is check if there already exists a song in the database, right? And the way we're going to do that is, um, if you remember early on, I mentioned that we're going to have a column called Spotify ID. And that is the unique identifier that Spotify give for each song. And we're going to store that in our database, right? So in theory, as we start to store more and more songs in our database, each one will have this Spotify ID. And then all we need to do is anytime we want to add a song, we just check if we already have one with that matching Spotify ID, in which case we uh, won't store the song. So to translate that into code um, we will execute a query this will select song this is the model right and then we'll do where song.spotify id is equal to song.spotify id and then we want to find the first instance if there is a match right and then if there isn't a match we will add this to the session And uh, what this is basically doing is it's adding it into a staging area where by the end of this session, all we need to run is this last method called session.commit, which will uh, run all of the transactions or essentially the uh, queries. And in this case, the query is writing to the database all of the songs uh, that we want to write. And so this session commits uh, all of those uh, transactions. That's what they call it. And then uh, that's it. We're good to go. So this will save all of the songs to the database. We can now return back to our main method, do the last finishing touches. Right. So now that we're nearing towards the end, I want to show you how you can get the client ID and the client secret, which is what we're going to need to be able to run the application. So if you visit developer spotify.com click on login and then just log in with your spotify account i'm going to blur mine out here but um yeah just click on login that will redirect you back to the page and then what you want to do on the top right is click your name followed by dashboard and as you can see um, at the moment i have no apps here we're going to create an app and that's going to give us the credentials so as you can see i haven't got any apps so click on create app and then what you want to do is give your app a name i'm going to call it save spotify songs just copy that paste that in the app description the website you can leave blank redirect uh, uri you can leave blank click on web api oh you, to be fair you could just fill it in with localhost 5000 even though we're not going to use this um i have another video showing you how you can set up so that a user can log in with their spotify if you're building an application that you want to deploy on web in which case the redirect uri is actually quite important but for this application we're going to be using client credentials and you don't need that so yeah just put that in for now but uh know that you won't need it for this application and then the next thing is you want to uh, specify the web api then click on i understand click on save and then as you can see your app is now created just keep in mind right if you do build an application with Spotify you'll be able to have access to data around or about your app and its usage so that's quite good to know but what you want to do is now go on to settings and then these are the two pieces of information right so copy these uh, the client ID and the client secret copy these two things two values as you can see mine are blurred out but yeah just copy them and what we will do is paste them into an environment variable file which I'll show you how to do now right so when it comes to credentials you should never hard code them instead you should put them either in your environment or you should pull them from a secrets uh, manager on the cloud what we're going to do is have a file and uh, this file is going to be called .env so just follow along with me create this file called .env in the directory and then I uh, just want to make sure it's created yep .env go into this file and then type in export client id equals and then we'll have one for client secret 
And what I want you to do is paste your client ID after this equal sign and paste your client secret after this equal sign and then save this file. And I'm going to do that off camera. But once you save these, then what we'll do is source them into the environment before we run our application. OK, and then the last thing that we want to do is import the DAO methods and then, of course, assign this client ID and secret based off what's in the environment. So to do that, let's start off by importing the DAO methods. I will uh, import that below here from song on DAO, import DAO get all songs and DAO save songs. And then what we want to do up above here is import the OS library. And then for the client ID, we'll do os.environment.get. And then we put this in an environment variable called client ID. Uh, because I'm lazy, I will do this. Uh, yeah, and then secret right and so that's our two environment variables that we created earlier on uh, in the .m file that's hidden we're going to source those into our environment we're going to assign those put those into these two variables here client id and client secret and yeah that just keeps your credentials safe and it avoids you having to hard code them right so it's time to now give our application a run and um if you've stayed with me until this point and you've coded along with me you know what you're special because uh we've written a lot of code and there's been a lot in this application and there's been a lot to get your head around so if, yeah if you stuck with me kudos to you and actually let me know in the comments below uh you know put the words i'm special because you are all right so uh yeah let's uh, actually give this application a run uh, a few bits and pieces we need to do so the first thing that we need to do is we need to source the environment file so you can do that by typing in source space dot env that will add it into your environment the next thing that i want to do is create a virtual environment that's going to have our dependencies so i'm using python 3.8 you can type Python 3, that will achieve the same thing or should achieve the same thing. Um, and then dash M, vem, vem, that will create a virtual environment in this folder called vem. And then we need to activate the virtual environment. We can do that by typing source vem bin activate. And as you can see on the left hand side, it's now activated. And then the last thing we need to do is install all the requirements uh, in the requirements file into that virtual environment. And uh, once these are installed, we should be good to go. It's just taking a second here. OK, so let's give this application a run. I'm quite excited about this. So type in Python 3 main.py. So just before we run this, let's remind ourselves what's going to happen. So we're going to be presented with a few options. One is to quit. One is to get all of the songs currently in the database. And the other one is to actually search songs using the Spotify API. We'll get back all of those songs and then we'll be asked uh, whether we want to save those songs to the database, which we're going to select yes. And then what we'll do is just check that those songs have been saved. Okay, so let's give this a run. Type python3 main.py and then I want to test the quit. Let's just make sure the quit works, right? Yeah, it worked. Okay. Um, making guys wait but yeah it's really important to like test the boring options um or the ones that you might often miss um all right let's run this again so i'm going to tap s for search and then let's search drake that was quick 10 songs have now been returned or by drake as you can see the title and of course the artist which is drake and uh yeah that worked so now we're being asked do we want to save these songs yes we do tap y okay and now presumably all of those songs have been saved into the database and let's confirm that's the case by tapping g which is the option that's going to run the query that's going to retrieve all of the songs from the database tap enter and that worked as you can see all songs in the database and these are the 10 songs that we just saved so that's fantastic all right so i will link to a playlist showing you other spotify api project videos that i've made in particular showing you how to build an application that gets a user to log in with their spotify account um so definitely do check that out other than that if you enjoyed this video please please do give it a like it will go a long way in helping me grow at this channel and of course helping this video reach other people who are just as interested thanks a lot for watching and i'll see you in the next one peace